Eclipse by Andy Rash Two months ago, I learned there would be a total solar eclipse. The sun would go completely behind the moon, and the moon would cast a shadow on Earth. But to see it happen, I would have to be in the right place at the right time. I decided to make a plan. A month ago, I picked out the perfect place and time to watch the eclipse. At this location on the path of totality, the moon will be totally blocking the sun's light for 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Dad said we could drive there. A week ago, I ordered special dark glasses to protect our eyes when we watch the eclipse. Staring right at the sun would damage our eyes, so wearing official eclipse glasses is important. But first, I tried them out. Clunk. A day ago, Dad and I drove down to a campsite so we could wake up close to the path of totality. An hour ago, we packed up our stuff to get to the spot I picked out. A minute ago, the sun began to hide behind the moon. We barely made it. A second ago, the sun disappeared behind the moon. Now, Dad and I are in the dark. We take off our special glasses. Sunset colors glow all around. Crickets chirp. Dogs bark. Street lights turn on. They all think it's nighttime. Shimmering rays shine around the moon. I try not to blink. We are in the perfect place at the perfect time. A second from now, the sun will burst out from behind the moon. We'll put our special glasses back on. It will be time to go. A minute from now, we will see crescent moon-shaped spots of sunlight on the ground as we walk back to the car. An hour from now, we'll be stuck in a big traffic jam going home. I'll be sad the eclipse is over. A day from now, I'll close my eyes and try to remember everything. I'll find out when the next eclipse will happen in the United States. Not for years. A year from now, Dad and I will still talk about what we saw. We won't remember everything, but it will be fun to try. Years from now, we'll go again, and once more, we'll be in the perfect place at the perfect time.